God. Hey, Vibo, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Excellent. <laughs> we sit next to <laughs> and ask him how we are doing. Yep. All right. So I'm going to uh, turn off the video and we will get started with uh, session two. So we are off camera now. Okay, that's cool. All right. So what we will talk about today is about um, what is getting in our way or in your way. See, the concepts that I taught you last week, uh, it was very simple or it, uh, earlier this week, right? How hard it is for someone to uh, save money uh, in the sense how hard it is for someone to spend less than they make, how hard it is for someone to save money and invest that money. It's it's simple or at least whatever I shared it appears super simple, but it is uh, only going to be possible if we eliminate a few things that is going to come in the middle uh, of making it happen. Before we get into that, why don't you share uh, one or two or three or your key takeaways from uh, the previous session, which was on the joys of compounding. All right. Um, I mean, one thing is uh, like since uh, compound interest like starts to like is exponential, it's better to like uh, start like in saving and investing earlier on. So it builds up like, you know, faster towards the end. Right. Yeah. Another thing is like credit card debt is not good because like there's a high interest rate and it forces you to spend money where you could have spent it elsewhere. And um, a third one, I mean, yeah, those were like the two biggest ones, like about like the kinds of debt and like, it's just the, like how uh, the compound interest is both good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And then one other thing, uh, which is, you know, most of the returns happens at the end, right. Or compound yeah. backloaded. So, which means you have to play this game uh, much, much longer. And actually, right, one other thing that I wanted to share last time, which I did not, which is, uh, you know, the formula says uh, your initial amount times one plus interest rate, the whole power, you know, the duration. Mm -hmm. So there are three variables in it, right? The initial amount or the initial capital and yeah. the interest rate. And the third variable is uh, the time uh, that you're compounding. Of the three, which one is the most important thing? Um, probably time. Yes, why is that? Because uh, we talked about before, like compound interest is like what it's back end, like it um, mm -hmm. it takes time for it to grow, right? So even if like, let's say the uh, it, there's like a a hundred percent extra growth, if you only like do it for one year, um, mm -hmm. it's like uh, I mean, if you look at the amount of money you make in one year versus like a hundred years, you're going to make a lot more money in a hundred years because it keeps on compounding. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think if you have to pick, I mean, of course, right, if your P is zero, that is, if you start with zero, there is nothing to compound. So you need something. But again, right, instead of over optimizing for uh, the interest rate, or how fast am I going to grow? Or how fast am I going to learn? The most important thing is to do it consistently over a long period of time. That's where uh, most of uh, the magic is going to come from. So, so the interest rate, the, the, the exponent is important or the longer the compounding happens, the bigger the reward is going to be. All right. So let's get uh, with today's session, uh, which is on what is getting in your way. They, I came up with three things. Again, right, these need not be the three. The reason I chose three is uh, three is uh, simpler to remember than five or 10 or 20. So I chose these three, what I thought is important. Uh, maybe for you, it could be a different three or you might agree with this three. So let's see how this goes. So the first one for me uh, is uh, temptations, right? Temptations uh, are all around us. Take for example, the number of uh, video streaming uh, companies that are out there. How many video streaming channels do we have? Um, I mean, we have a uh, Netflix, um hbo max disney plus amazon prime yeah four yeah right. and we also watch youtube right right oh that counts all right five yeah the, there are five right so all of it is tempting us to spend our precious time on right mm -hmm. so we do spend time because we have fun watching it but what happens if we end up watching and end up binge watching on, on all seven days in a week i mean you have less time less time to do other things, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the key here is, right, temptations, you will find temptations all around you. Uh, 
whether it could come in the form of uh, uh, streaming channels or it could come in the form of uh, social networking like facebook instagram tiktok etc what we need to make sure is uh, we should uh, protect our time so that we don't miss out on our goals whatever goals we have we should make sure that we should hit our goals and all these additional things they are needed right without it uh, we will be like a machine doing the same thing over and over end of the day we should have fun and all these things are fantastic without it i can't i mean if i want to play my favorite song that i listened way back in 1980s or 90s youtube is a terrific asset but everything if overdone is going to cost us a lot so that's an important thing to remember so when it comes to temptations other than videos i mean watching videos or you know spending time on social media one big temptation is going to be impulsive purchases that uh, uh, that companies will make us do what kind of products uh, can you think of that tempts you to buy what are some products that comes to your mind I mean this isn't really a product but like usually like during like certain like periods during the year companies have like sales like black friday mm. so when things are like on sale right you're more mm-hmm. inclined to buy something cuz it's like cheaper than usual mhm so that's kind of like a temptation right mhm mhm yeah and and sometimes those temptations are good because say for example if you wanted to buy a uh, an item right it could be a video game or it could be something else maybe if you get it on a deal there is nothing wrong in buying as long as i'll talk about the what to uh, keep in mind okay so this is an ad uh, this is an ad from mastercard i'm going to play this ad this ad was taken long back uh, let's spend a minute uh, watching this ad chocolate on roses and whiskers on kittens red copper kettles and warm wool and mittens brown paper packages tied up with strings these are a few of my favorite things when the dog bites when the bees sting when i'm feeling sad i simply remember my favorite thing and then i don't feel so bad the world mastercard the card that won't hold you back So what do you take away from this ad? I mean everything had like a price tag and Mastercard says oh in Mastercard it's all priceless and just like buy it. Yeah, yeah. So when yeah, so maybe my takeaway is uh, pretty much in line with your takeaway uh which is uh, you know I have the power to buy anything that I want to buy end of the day I'm just going to swipe uh, uh with with Mastercard or Visa. So boom magically things will happen right So now remember uh, we spoke about a credit card interest rate of what 15% and you spoke about it's close to 26% when you uh, discussed in your class mm-hmm. right and then you also mentioned oh they just say it is minimum right yeah now uh, let's talk about uh, do you know what happens when somebody swipes a credit card um it get it gets at- I mean you pay it at the end of the month right so you don't pay it now you pay it at the end of the month you're like using credits i think kind of yeah yeah actually yeah no you're you're more or less right but uh, it's a little more involved than what you think the reason i'll just talk about it a little and then explain why i'm saying what i'm saying see imagine you're a card holder here you have a visa credit card or a mastercard credit card okay mm-hmm. let's take you go to uh, uh, gamestop which is right. your which used to be or which is your favorite shop mm. you go swipe your credit card in gamestop let's take you make a purchase of 100 dollars right mm-hmm. so what does gamestop do gamestop is a merchant here yeah now this money needs to get deposited in gamestop's bank remember the money has to move from your card uh, uh, into gamestop's bank right Mm-hmm. So what GameStop does is it sends this particular information that Vibo is swiping with this particular card, charge him one hundred dollars to the uh, bank of uh, uh, GameStop or where GameStop holds its bank account, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's take in this example the bank name is Chase. And what and, and the bank Chase Bank knows is oh it looks at the credit card. if the number of the credit card starts with 4 it knows that it's a visa network if it starts with 5 it knows it's a mastercard network because the first digit signifies uh, who which network should i talk to 
So let's take in this case, it is Visa because say it starts with four. It goes to Visa network, right? Now it says charge uh, uh, Vibu $100, right? That's what uh, Chase would tell Visa. Now Visa does, what Visa does is using the remaining piece of the credit card number. Remember credit card has 16 digits. Right. So it uses the remaining piece of information to identify the bank where you have an account. So let's take you have an account uh, with the uh, Wells Fargo bank. Right. The example here is Capital One. Now, what Visa does using the remaining numbers, which would include the, uh, that your account belongs or your bank is Wells Fargo, and it also tells what account number it is. It goes to Wells Fargo, and Wells Fargo will detect. Uh, uh, it'll check whether you have sufficient funds, and can I authorize uh, one hundred dollars to be taken out from your account? Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what Wells does, Wells will not transmit all $100. It would keep, in this example, it is keeping $1.70. I'll explain why it does what it does. And then the remaining amount goes to uh, uh, Chase. And Visa, because of it doing all the processing, let's take it keeps 13 cents. The details vary depending on the type of transaction, depending on the merchants. But let's take Visa takes uh, 13 cents on it. So the balance will go to merchant after the merchant bank also called as the acquirer. That person keeps another in this example, 19 cents. So the hundred dollars that you paid, eventually what went to GameStop is not $100. They get lesser. It could be 97.25 in this example, or it could be $98. Now who gets the most of uh, the $2 and 75 cents in this example? Uh, who gets the most of the two dollars and seventy five cents? Yeah, I mean, I think it says the issuer, right? Because they keep two dollars and twenty. Yep. So why does an issuer keeps get to keep more than Visa or the bank of the merchant? In this case, uh, it is Chase and the merchant is GameStop. Mm, I mean, I'm not really sure. Yeah, hey, make a guess. Um, maybe uh, they have to do the most most work in the three to like process the money. Well, sure, that's one. Now, okay, maybe I'll flip the question this way. At the end of the month, let's take this is the only transaction that you had, $100. Mm -hmm. Who will you pay that $100? Uh, oh, you pay uh, the credit card company, right? Which is? Oh, Capital One. Yep, which is in, in your example, I used Wells Fargo. So you pay it to Wells Fargo. Right. What happens if you don't pay? For some reason you know, you run away, you don't pay, what happens? Oh, they don't get the money. So, oh, okay. that's why they keep more of it just exactly. as a backup, a exactly. feel safe kind of. Exactly, because they are taking a risk here. They are taking what is called as a credit risk. Mm -hmm. That is why they are keeping a lot more compared to Visa. Is Visa taking any credit risk here? It is moving money, that's it. Yeah. Is, is Chase taking any risk here? uh no because they're just getting money from the merchants yeah no merchant no not even merchant the money comes from uh, uh the money comes from the issuer in this case the money comes from you because wells fargo is sending the money to chase correct and right. it gets deposited into the merchant's account so the person who's taking the risk is uh, this guy wells fargo or capital one in the slide it's capital one when I spoke about it, you, I said you had account in Wells Fargo. So mm -hmm. since they are taking most of the risk, they get to keep a lot more. Okay. Right. Now, here's the next question. Now, have you seen uh, credit card companies sending out rewards? Like, like you know, I, I don't know if you have seen an ad which says... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, like, um, if you, like, open a new credit card, you get, like, 2% uh, cash back, stuff yes. like that. Yes, 1% cash back, 2%. Where are they getting that cash back from? How are they getting that money? Oh, they probably get it from this uh, interchange fee, right? Yes, this interchange fee, They let's say if it is 1%, if let's take they make a dollar, uh, they make a 2%, I'm just pretending that they're making two, they can give you 1%, even they can give you 1.5% because end of the day, it's the money that they are getting because they are encouraging you to spend. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now I said there are two kinds of uh, credit card holders. One, they are transactors. They settle their bills end of the month. 
Yeah. The other people are revolvers. They keep debt. They run at 15%, 17% or 20% depending on uh, the credit score of the borrower. Now, who gets benefited? I mean, where, who collects the money? Who collects the money? I yeah. mean, like between the two kinds of people? Yeah, between, let's take if you are a revolver uh, mm -hmm. and you pay interest. Who yeah. gets the interest? Oh, the issuer. Correct. Now you know why issuer is sending out all the rewards. Right, yeah. Right, so the whole ecosystem gets benefited when people spend more. Yeah. Right? So don't get me wrong, right? Credit card is one of the greatest inventions that had happened. Without credit card, the only other option that we have to spend money is to use cash or we have to write checks, which take time to clear. So the commerce that we see, let's take if we all spend $100 together with credit cards, without credit card, that number will be much, much, much lower. So credit card is a greatest of greatest of invention. We, it allows us to spend money anywhere, any place, anytime, whatever we want to buy, we can buy 24 by seven. Now, everybody in this system, they are incentivized. And if there's one thing that you're going to learn Vibu, in life, incentives are so powerful. If you want to understand something about why a person is behaving in a certain way or why a company is behaving in a certain way, one question you can ask is, what are their incentives? What make them to behave this way? What do they, what is their incentive? That one question will open up so many things. The whole network is phenomenal. Without it, commerce would not be where it would be. But if we fall in for temptations, if we stretch ourselves and buy a lot more, and if we end up becoming a revolver, then there is a problem, right? So yeah. the point of this uh, that I wanted to share is, uh, remember, incentives matter. You do something because of incentives. I do some things because of incentives. Everybody on the planet does something because of incentives, which includes companies. So a greatest invention can become a problem if we don't use it responsibly. So credit card is a greatest power, but use it responsibility. Be a transactor, but don't be a revolver questions uh no not yet all right uh okay just spend a few seconds uh i mean looking at this slide and reading what is written in the slide all right yeah read it yeah what do you what do you what do you take away from this I mean, like um, when you buy something, you're happy at the moment, but the happiness doesn't last. So you buy more things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's pretty much a good uh, summary of the slide. Uh, there is a concept called as homeostasis. Have you heard about it? I mean, uh, maybe I heard of like the two parts individually. Yeah. What is it? Maybe if you. I mean, stasis is kind of like when you keep an object like still, right? Yeah. And homeo, isn't that kind of like, um, this sounds kind of like homo sapiens. Does that mean like people or something? No. Possibly. I think uh, maybe stasis is still, that's right. Homeo, the meaning of homeo, uh, let me quickly check. Uh, I, uh, homeo is related to development of species. Well, I do not know what exactly that is. Yeah, possibly person right or people you're right uh, because homeopath homeo is person and who practices homeopathy so it's homeo should be uh, a person so you're right so the concept goes this way right it's probably uh, an important concept in biology what it does is say uh, let's imagine your body gets very hot what does your body do uh you start sweating yeah why does it do that uh to cool it off yeah, let's take if it becomes so cold, what happens? Um, you start to feel cold. Yeah, no, you and, shiver. The body right. shivers, right? Why does the body shiver? Uh, to warm itself up. Yep, exactly, right? So what body does, uh, pretty much every biological system you can take or any species you can take, they operate in a certain range. It could be your temperature or it could be any other parameter in your body. It has a range, what is called as an optimal range where it can function properly. 
the moment it goes beyond that range it could be your body temperature going about let's take 98.4 or going below that uh, uh, temperature your body starts to pull it back to its optimal range and that this concept of pulling it back is called as homeostasis the reason why the body can, body does it automatically is for it to survive it has to do that i think the concept of homeostasis and the concept of hedonic treadmill is one and the same at least this is my thought and what you see on the slide is our human mind or brain getting used to something let's take i make a purchase i might be super happy until i make the purchase and my happiness starts to drift down uh, after a certain point what the body or the brain is trying to do is it's trying to come back to its neutral state and this is called as your hedonic treadmill and in a way this is a concept uh, uh, which is very similar to homeostasis i don't see it as any different other than the words being different so the point i'm trying to drive from this slide is, is not to say don't buy anything go buy but don't buy and get into something that's going to come in between you and your goals that is don't stretch yourself too much and end up being a revolver don't fall into temptations where you might uh, not you know study for your exams or you might not be able to do something that you always wanted to do the reason is what's the point if hedonic treadmill is there if homeostasis is there why should i even be impulsive that's the point that i wanted to try questions um no none so far it makes sense like don't buy something for the sake of buying it yep but buy because you know i'm not saying you know don't buy yeah no no it's like uh, just buy stuff that you really like want or need like just yeah totally yeah makes sense and this is a very short video but i really enjoyed watching i'm going to play it This boils down to a couple of fundamental issues. One is called hedonic adaptation, which is a fancy scientist way of saying you get used to whatever you have. You think, if I can get that new car, if I could work a few less hours, if I could be on that other team, I'd be so psyched. And that leads to what's called impact bias. We think events in our lives are going to make us this happy or unhappy, and it always almost always turns out to be far less than we imagine any questions weibo uh no it kind of makes sense is like uh you think you you like hype something up that you think oh this would be so amazing but when you actually do it it doesn't meet your expectations cuz you like you expected a lot from it yep yep pretty much all right moving on from <clears throat> temptations the next one now probably if i have to pick and choose only one thing i would have picked up envy uh, it's probably the deadliest of sins to have um so before i get into the details of envy i'm going to play this excellent video
that round. All right. What do you think? I mean, they spent a lot to one up each other, and because of that, they went bankrupt and lost their house. Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, no, it, it's probably one of the fascinating videos that I've seen. Uh, uh, I think here's the take on envy. It is one of the few things with infinite downside without any upside, right? Or with zero upside. And this is uh, told by Charlie Munger in one of his talks. But think about it, right? By looking at others and envying what they have, are we getting any joy from it? Uh, not really. Yeah. And why? And there's only one side there. There's only downside or there's only negative effects of the looking at others and feeling envious about what they have. So why would anyone uh, uh, want to do something which does not have any upside, uh, but has infinite downside? So there's one thing that uh, I would highly encourage you to do is to not fall for envy, right? And a lot of things in life will uh, get solved if uh, we remove envy from the equation. And here's another thing, right? Every behavior that we have as humans, it is there for a reason, right? The, con the reason why envy has been programmed into us. What do you think or what could be the reasons why envy got programmed into us? Um, I mean, I'm not really sure, but... Make a guess. Um, Nobody knows. I'm just I'm going to make a yeah. guess. Yeah. Maybe to, I don't know, make humans competitive. Yeah. Possibly. And what happens when they become competitive? Um, they'll get driven and try to like reach their goal before like try to be better than others. Yep. And uh, for, I mean, remember, right? I told everyone has their incentives or I have their goals. What is the goal of evolution? Um, to be uh, the best species or to yeah. like, yeah, to kind of like adapt to survive yeah and reproduce mm -hmm. now maybe exp i mean looking at what you explained uh, maybe and we could uh, give us that advantage maybe it could have given us that advantage when our ancestors roamed uh, uh, savanna or you know escaped from the predators maybe it helped them to be competitive maybe it could have given us that advantage that could be one reason that i can think of i, I mean it's all i'm just making up uh, my own hypothesis here right so so what you said making us competitive so that uh, evolution's goal of survival and reproduction would have been met with that particular trait and because of that those genes would have got passed and passed down that could be the reason why uh, you know this trait is there but remember, in today's world, there is no question of, uh, you know, surviving, fighting to survive. Because pretty much if you look at uh, uh, people who are above the poverty line today compared to people who were uh, below the poverty line, it's a night and day difference. I would say most of humanity, uh, they are definitely above the poverty line. So the world is getting better and better. So there is no reason to be envious. Uh, so at least that's how I would see it. Why get into something that does not have any upside but has infinite downside? Questions? Uh, no. All right. Uh, then uh, just the, who who is this person? Uh, ben Franklin. Yeah, you know it better than me. So maybe just uh, quickly go through it, especially the one highlighted in green. Oh, sorry, blue. All right, yeah, I read it. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, like before the blue thing, he says that people have more like luxury stuff, right? Yeah. Than um, like necessities. Mm -hmm. And in the blue thing, he talks about how like 
he could it's pretty much just about like envy like would I envy he would be like happier he wouldn't care about like people wouldn't care about other people's like clothes and furniture mm-hmm. makes sense yeah i think uh to me the the, the reason i highlighted it in blue uh was uh, the, he pretty much talks about envy and why we should avoid it so yeah so that's the second uh, thing that i would avoid and as i said if there's only one thing of the three that i would pick i would have picked envy without any doubt All right. The third piece uh, that I want to talk about is procrastination. What is procrastination? Oh, uh, just like holding on, like doing it at the last minute. Yep. Hey, why? Why should I do it today? Right. Let me do it tomorrow. Let me do it day after. That's procrastination. Why do you think humans got this behavior programmed? And remember, every behavior, good or bad, is there mm-hmm. for a reason. Now, why do you think procrastination is there? um yeah it's a guess nobody knows yeah, yeah. or at least i don't know <laughs> i mean you can so like you can choose which is more important which is not say you have like two things to do you could procrastinate on one thing so you could do something else that's more important okay sure yeah basically you are you know prioritizing I yeah mean, you are, you're doing one and then letting the other one wait that's good let me i'm i can think of one other example which is uh, say i'm very tired today right i'm seriously tired today and uh, maybe i have fever and i want to put something off because it takes a lot of effort and i'm not my brain is not there with fever maybe let me come back to it after a week or two and that's a genuine reason because you don't want to break your body if the, your body is not there to do that particular task so the and so that could be another reason why procrastination is there and the point to to share is procrastination is not neither it's good in certain cases it is bad in certain cases so i'm not saying procrastination is bad altogether so in cases where you said right prioritizing could be one where you are putting it off consciously or deliberately and the other example i gave maybe i don't want to do it because i'm tired could be another reason i'm talking about procrastination where i am delaying something but it is going to do more harm to me if i delay it that's the procrastination that we want to avoid so here's an example everybody knows right uh, exercising is good for health everybody knows eating healthy is good for health everybody knows saving for the future and investing for the future is important but why do most people don't do it think it's about too, it for i mean it could be too much work for some people too much work for some people agree agree so they kind of put it off maybe they are scared of that oh man i don't even know how to do this let me put it off so what i have learned vibo is our brain has something called as a discounting function right this is my own hypothesis i don't know if it is true but i'll share an example to say i mean to back what i'm saying so let's take uh, events like uh, eating healthy working out investing for the future is it going to benefit me today in this moment or would it benefit me sometime in the future um uh, in the future in the future right no nothing today but let's say if i go and have an ice cream today would i enjoy it today or would i enjoy it in the future uh you do enjoy it now what about binge watching a movie or a show now what about a video game now yeah so what brain does is when events however important it is if it happens in the future and very far in the future it discounts its value in the sense if the value in the future is 100 when what do i mean by discounting is i bring that value back to today and if that value is say 2 right that's what i meant by discounting now it would say like intrinsically or oh, two it's fine it's not important again i mean i don't know what the brain does but this is my hypothesis in terms of what it does when it is dealing with future events here's an example that i have seen uh, happen to me right so when people come to me and ask me uh, for a meeting invite uh, hey i want to talk to you sometime this week or next week i would you know check my calendar make sure that i have time and make sure that i'm not doing anything important and then i would say you know think 10 times before saying yes or before accepting that meeting but if someone comes to me and say hey can we meet 3 uh, weeks from now 5 weeks from now 
i don't even think default i say yes and i observed my behavior i reflected on my behavior to see why i say what i say one explanation could be events in the future i'm discounting and i'm putting in lesser value compared to the events that are happening today or in the next week or two does it make sense ah uh, yeah okay now let's watch this video have you read uh, Di- i mean do you know dan really yeah is any kind of like a psychologist yep a i remember writer. you yeah you read a book of him right a book of his yeah predictably right ah uh-huh, yeah that one okay so he's the author of that book all right let's spend uh, a few minutes watching this uh, video So procrastination is basically a simple term for a, a deep problem with human nature and the problem has to do with time. We live in the here and now but what's good for us it's often long in the future and, and we have plans. In the future we will save money and we would eat healthily and we would exercise and we would do this and we would do that and we will do all that. Today I just don't feel like it. Today the chocolate cake is tempting and the gym is far away and it's a little too humid outside and I really saw a new bike and I don't feel like saving. So procrastination is about the problem that we're just not designed to think about the long term. Right? Why would nature even get us to think about what will happen 30 or 50 or 60 years from now? So we think about now and the now is much more powerful and the future doesn't work. a personal story I, I was in hospital for many years and one of the things that happened was I got hepatitis C from an infected uh, infected blood that they gave me as a blood donation and um, in the beginning they didn't know it was hepatitis C they just had hepatitis and it would flare up from time to time and make my recovery much much slower and about six years later they identified the virus for hepatitis C and I knew what I had and then there was a treatment called interferon And interferon is a medication that was developed for a hairy cell leukemia. It's an unpleasant medication. After each injection, I would feel vomiting and sick and fever and, and so on. And I had to take these injections three times a week for a year and a half. So now think about this problem. Uh, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I had to go home, measure the, in the syringe the injection, plug it into my thigh and inject myself, knowing that in an hour I will start to... vomiting and having fever and so on. It's very tough to do, right? But that's really the basic human problem. That there's something that is good for us in the future. I really don't want to die from liver cirrhosis. But the steps that we can take now are incredibly painful to, to fix that. So we often don't, don't do that. This, by the way, brings us to the second issue about what do we do about it? How can we overcome it? So when I finished this year and a half of treatment, uh, the doctors told me that I was the only patient that they ever had that took their medications regularly. And you can wonder, you know, do I have more self-control than other people? But, you know, I don't. I eat the same junk food and I do the same mistakes and I procrastinate just the same way. But I created a trick for myself. And the trick is that I love movies. If I had time, I would watch lots of movies. So I said I'm not watching movies any other time but Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And on those mornings, I would go to the video store, I would rent two or three movies that I like. I would have them in my backpack for the whole day, anticipating watching them. And when I would get home, I would inject myself, I would get a blanket for the shivering, I would get a bucket for the vomiting, and I would start watching a movie immediately. I didn't wait until I would get sick. I basically tried to create a connection between the injection and something I loved. And I think that's basically one of the tricks we can try and do to ourselves. We say, we are not designed to care about the future. We just can't change that. We just can't change the fact that we'll think every day, how do what I do now will transfer to 30 years from now. So instead, what we can do is we can create other benefits that will be more in the present, kind of import new benefits for the present. What do you think? Yeah, I can't hear you, Vibhu. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, like I, I kind of agree with uh, what you said, like create incentives to like persuade you to do it. Yep, basically reward yourself uh, for doing uh, something that is very long-term in nature. Say if you like uh, 
you know, playing video games. Uh, I know you do. Uh, then you can play it for 30 minutes after doing a hard day's job. It could be, you know, studying for physics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, no. All right. I think this is one other habit uh, that is very important. When it, do you know who this person is? No. He is Andrew Ning. Uh, he is the founder of Coursera. And you know what Coursera is, right? Yeah. Yeah, where you can uh, take a lot of, a uh, lot of, I mean, you can take a lot of courses and most of these courses are taught by universities. He founded that and uh, he's a computer scientist and he's an expert in machine learning and AI. Uh, he is, uh, he has worked in uh, major companies like Google, uh, Baidu, et cetera. And he's, he's an expert in what he's doing. So one thing that he does every day is uh, he wears uh, blue shirts every day. You should read why he is wearing blue shirt every day. All right. Um... Oh, it's to create the habit yep. and willpower. Yep. They mean habit is great, much, much greater than willpower. The reason is we have a limited store of willpower every day. So when it comes to uh, habits and willpower, optimize for habits. Say, for example, uh, if you have to work out regularly, maybe work out on this on the same time, have a same set of routine. It could be like listening to the same set of music and then waking up at a certain time and then going to the gym, that could be one way to do it. And when it comes to investing, automate it as much as possible. Let's take every month at the beginning of the month, you uh, add more or buy more of uh, something, right? Where you are investing your money in. So make it automatic as much as possible where you don't need to think about it every time. The moment we think about it, remember we are tapping into the reservoir of uh, our brain and it has limited it can't operate efficiently if you continuously think about everything so choosing between habits and willpower always optimize for habits all right makes sense yeah and uh, there's one more video this is uh, uh, this was oh, this i have to hop on to another site over here okay can you see it yeah yeah that's good so what do you take away from this I mean, people are saving more, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. What What happened? What did What What did they do for them to save more? I mean, they gave them like incentives, right? That's right. Incentives to uh, uh, save more, and uh, and what else happened? It was automated, where they don't need to think about it. So every time they get a pay raise in the future, I mean, not today, but let's say whenever they get a pay raise. X percent of that would get auto saved. So, which means they don't need to think about it and the decision was made automatically. Right. Right. So I think, uh, yeah, creating the right incentives and uh, automating decisions as much as possible. Once you have figured out what you wanted to do would be the best way to avoid procrastination. Uh, the way in which Dan Ariely kind of did it, right? Where he linked uh, his... Uh, what he loved with mm -hmm. what he wanted to do he tied it together and if you look at what andrew ning did he wears the same shirt every day so that he doesn't need to think about or waste his mental uh, power on what dress should i wear because if you think about that then you won't be thinking on something else which is important and the example of save more for tomorrow is the whole idea of investing itself is being automated and not from today, but if I get up an increase in the future, then I'm going to put X percent of that in the future. Right. Any questions on this? Uh, no. Cool. All right. Uh, so the last part is going to be, remember the slide? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was from last time. Correct. I think, you know, getting uh, good, developing good habits and become getting improving 1% every day would let you 38x better compared to where you started. So it was this chart was uh, came from this guy, James Clear, and he has an excellent book called as Atomic Habits. Uh, so I would highly recommend you to uh, take a look at it and you know where to find this book from yeah. in our house. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any, any, any questions uh, that you have?
Uh, no, I mean, I feel like I understand everything that was in the presentation. Got it. And what are your key takeaways from today's session? Um, I mean, this is just kind of like obstacles we face, such as uh, procrastination, envy, and um, what was the first one again? Temptations. Temptations, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, isn't that similar to envy, kind of? It is kind of related, right? I think uh, uh, what happens is, right, you can get tempted on its own or you can look at someone else and get tempted. Uh, so the, the cost could be different, but at the end of the day, yeah, there is a linkage between temptations and envy. All right. Cool, so, yeah, right. The, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so we will end here. And in the next session, we will talk about uh, what are all the various options that are out there for investing. And we will spend time talking about each option. All right, cool. Cool. All right, I'm going to stop share and I'm going to...